welcome to Spirit Lutheran Church, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning. I'm Jim Alquist, and I am privileged to be the pastor of this wonderful congregation. Today we are confirming seven of our ninth graders. As they affirm those baptismal promises that God made with them, we invite you as well to affirm those same promises that God has made with you. This is also Commitment Sunday, a day that we invite people to drive through the Spirit parking lot between 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock to receive communion and a blessing and to drop off their pledges. Pledges to the three-year capital campaign to renovate our building and also a pledge toward the 2021 mission and ministry budget. I'm so excited because we haven't even started and already toward our $400,000 goal on the building renovation, we have received to date $207,725. Thank you. Our mission and ministry budget for 2021 has received $100,800. We look forward to bringing to you next Sunday a number that perhaps will exceed our goals. Thank you again. This is also Reformation Sunday. You may have noticed the red. It's the day that Martin Luther, over 500 years ago, was led by the Spirit to reform the church because there were some things happening that needed to be corrected. Perhaps today as well as we bless our young people, they too see some things that need to be reformed in the church. I keep reminding them that they are not the church of tomorrow, but they are the church of today, as all of us are. We begin our worship by singing Martin Luther's most famous hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. As you sing this song, pay attention to the words. The words come from Psalm 46. We begin by singing the first two verses.
Will you pray with me? Most gracious God, we give thanks for the gift of faith this day. We give thanks for your death and your resurrection that speaks life to us and life in abundance. From this faith that has been given to us, may we respond with a commitment, giving back those gifts that all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, it begins for most of us right here in the waters of baptism. As we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As faith comes upon us, the Holy Spirit is given to us through the water and through the word. And then a candle is lit. A candle is given to our parents or our sponsors. And we say, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father in heaven. Today, we are saying to not only our ninth grade confirmation class, but to every one of you to let your light continue to shine so that all can see Jesus through you and what you do. It all begins with faith, and faith is a gift given to us. We say in the third article, meaning of the Apostles' Creed, I cannot by my own understanding or effort believe, but the Holy Spirit gives me the gift of faith. It's all about God. Our confirmation young people get tired of this story, but I talk about how God is at the top of the ladder and we are at the bottom of the ladder. And the question is, where do we meet? No, not in the middle. We try so hard to climb up one or two rungs of the ladder, but we fall back down again. God comes completely down the ladder, takes us by the hand and brings us home. That's what this gift of faith is all about. And that's why Martin Luther needed to reform the church. As he read in Romans 3, he found out that we are justified. We are made right with God, not because of what we do, but because of what God has done for us. Pure, amazing, grace. And it's exemplified as a little baby, as most of us don't remember our baptism. But that's the day that the Holy Spirit came upon us. As we grow older and get into ninth grade, we might think that we can do more and make those decisions on our own, but we can't. When we get to be middle-aged, we start realizing that we don't know near as much as we thought we did. And then we get to be older, we find out that once again, we become helpless. And it's all about God coming down the ladder to take us by the hand. That's what faith is all about. And today, we celebrate this faith that has been given to us, and then we move on from faith to commitment. They go together, and faith comes first. Getting to know God as the spirit foundation principles say to us. We know God first, and then we respond with our commitment. That's what it's all about. We go forth knowing that we are justified. We are in a right relationship with God, not because we are good people, not because we do good things, but finally and only on the basis of faith. Young people and older people alike will ask the question, do I have to go to church? And the answer is no. You don't have to do anything. 
But after you see what God has done for you, you're going to want to go to church. The next question is, do I have to give to church? And the answer is no. You don't have to give anything back to God. But after you realize what God has given to you, what God has done for you, the promises that God has made for you, you're going to want to give back to God. And that is our commitment. It's all about faith as it begins and commitment as it goes on. Now, if you were to ask anyone who's been married 40, 50, 60, 70 years, you know that it's not all about love, but it's about commitment. Because there are times when we really don't love each other, but if we have the faith and the commitment, then we know that God will keep us together. It's the same thing with the church. What is it that sustains a church like spirit for over a hundred years, even though we've been different names? It's faith and commitment. That's what keeps us going year after year. And there's a lot riding on our commitment, both inside this building and beyond the walls of this community, as we have found out during this COVID time. A commitment based on faith is a commitment of love, love for the one you and I have faith in, Jesus Christ, and love for those whose lives will be blessed, changed, encouraged, reformed, healed, and yes, even served, because faith and commitment go together. It is an unconditional commitment. There are no strings attached to this kind of commitment. It's a simple promise on your part and my part that is grounded in love and comes out of faith that causes you and me to respond with resources of time, talent, and money that changes lives and changes the world unless we make the connection between the offering plate and the person whose life is embraced because of the gift, it is hard to open our hands and our hearts and place our lives in the offering basket, if you will. And that's where we are. As children of God of all ages, as people of spirit, the Holy Spirit, we take our faith this day and we commit our lives only through the gift of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit fans the flames of commitment and opens our hearts to the needs around us and the love of Christ compels us as we respond. The commitment always comes out of prayer as we listen to the Holy Spirit tell us about the freedom that we have in Jesus to be generous and not to be enslaved to the things of the world. The commitment comes out of the heart because all giving begins and comes out of the heart of God. Renew the commitment out of faith, out of hope, out of love. Renew the promises that God has made for you. And then we all will respond. Amen.
yet have reached our glory, but I will gladly join the fight. And when our children tell their story, they'll tell the story of tonight. They'll tell the story of tonight, tonight. Have you ever felt like no? They tell you someone will come running to take you home. It's a glass to all of us. Tomorrow there'll be more of us. Telling the story of tonight out of the shadows. The morning is breaking and all is new. All is new. It's only a matter of time. crashing through and you need a friend to carry you when you're broken on the ground you will be found to let the sun come streaming in cause you'll look up and you'll rise again when if you only look around you will be found when our children tell their story you will be found they'll tell the story My name is Karen. The Bible verse I chose is Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. This verse is close to home because God is telling you and me that he knows what he's doing and that he's sure that whatever is going to happen, God has a reason for it. For me, I think about all the times that I've been bullied. I think God put those people in my life to toughen me up and to teach me how to forgive people who aren't very nice. But even though it was hard to forgive those people who bullied me or were mean, I found a way to forgive them. I do that through prayer and ask God to show me the forgiveness I need to show them. My family, all three of my sisters, my parents have brought me through this journey and path to Jesus. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joel Garrison, and this is my faith statement. When I first started working on my faith statement, I had no idea what I wanted to do. They asked, I asked my parents what I should do, hoping they would just give me answers. Instead, they answered my questions with more questions, obviously. They asked me what my favorite thing to do is, and I told them playing baseball. They asked why playing baseball was my favorite thing to do, and because was not the answer. I told them because I love it. I get to be outside, I get to see my friends, and I get to spend time with my friends and teammates. I get to help other players get better at baseball, and other players can help me get better at baseball. I get to learn how to be a better player from my coaches. When I'm having a bad day, I can go hit a bucket of baseballs and feel better. Baseball makes, helps me feel centered. They asked what I do to get better at baseball. I told them practice, and I'd practice, and I'd practice. I listen to my coaches and apply what they told me to my games. I work with the hitting coach and change what I need to make sure to have my best swing possible. I work with a trainer 
to make sure I have the speed to run the bases and strength to throw the ball. They said, there's your answer. I started researching Bible verses like I do baseball plays, and I kept coming to 2 Chronicles 15.7. But as far but as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. I did some more research on this verse and found the English Standard Version, and I knew it was what I'm, I felt. But you take courage, do not let your hands be weak, for you shall be rewarded. The, the more I read this verse, the more I realized how much my faith in baseball had in common. Going to confirmation is just like going to practice. Practicing baseball helps me become a better player just like going to class to help me become a better Christian. Confirmation teachers teach me what they know about faith and their experience with faith. The same way my coaches teach me what they know about baseball and their experiences with the game. Going to church service and listening to the pastor is like working with my trainer. He's helping me keep my faith strong just like the trainer is helping me with my speed strength and conditioning hearing the sermon is like working with my hitting coach helps me remember and change the small the small things to be a stronger christian just like my hitting coach helps me remember and change small things to be a stronger hitter in baseball when i work hard and don't give up i'm rewarded with a good play or a win i always learn to be a better baseball player in my faith, if I work hard and don't give up, I am rewarded with strength and courage to be a better person. Having a baseball in my hand keeps me centered on the field, but my faith keeps me centered in everything I do. My faith has made me a stronger person and is helping me make the world a better place on and off the diamond. Hi, I am Heaven. I'm in ninth grade and I go to North High School where I'm getting confirmated. So, um, I chose Philippians 4.13, which is, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I chose this because I recently lost my grandma like six months ago and I like lost where God was and I was like, like that it was my fault that she died and everything and... God strengthened me and reminded me that it's okay. Your grandma's still looking over you and everything. Uh, it's hard to talk about this because I was really attached to my grandma. I went to her every day after school for I don't even know how many years. She, like, got me into, like, God stuff like I know she'd be if she was still here she'd be so happy that I'm getting confirmated and I know she's watching over me my grandpa always said that she always wanted to see me get confirmated because she's never had a grandchild yet who has got confirmated so I wish she was here to see me get confirmated but it's okay and then um there were also other times when I didn't know where God was where I was dealing with getting bullied, depression kicked in, and there were times even when I was suicidal, and I thought I'd be better off dead. But then I'd read the Bible or think about God, and I'd be like, heaven, don't do it. It's not worth it. Look at all the people who care about you. That God wants you to live and stuff. And then... Um, and then I became super close to God, though, when I went on the mission trip last year. I did the mission trip this year, too, but it wasn't the same this year because of COVID. But the first year, it was so fun. I got to work with little kids, if you know me personally. I love little kids, or any, like, kids. So I got to work with little kids and help them learn how to read and stuff, and it was so much fun. But, yeah, that's the statement I chose, and now you're going to hear me play my alto saxophone for Robert. So, yeah. Here I am, don't work shit.
Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Corinthians 9.25 Physical items and rewards are temporary. You work hard, but the result will fade. But God will never fade as long as your faith, faith does not fade. God's love is worth more than any physical object. God has given everyone their own gifts. Some people are smart, some people are athletic, some people are problem solvers, and some people are leaders. My gift was baseball. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! It is! Yes! My name is Katya Morrow, and I chose the Bible verse Philippians 4.13. Um, this verse is, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. When I chose the Bible verse Philippians 4.13, um, I chose it not only because I could highly relate to it, but also because um, when I was younger, my mom gave me this ring. And when she gave me this ring, I never thought like much about it. I was like, oh, it's just another ring to add to my collection. And when Pastor Jim told us we had to choose a Bible verse, I remembered that this ring had writing on it. And I was like, if I'm remembering correct, it has a Bible verse on it. So I went back and looked at this ring, and it has the Bible verse Philippians 4.13 on it. And I read this off this Bible verse off of this ring, and I knew after reading it that that was the verse that I wanted, not only because my mom had given it to me, which made it even more special, but also because I could relate to it very highly. And... I have been through a lot, which helps me relate to this Bible verse, and some of those things being good and some of those things being bad. Um, for example, my grandma Kathy passed away two years ago. It'll be three years in November, and me and her were very close, and she suffered um Alzheimer's disease so watching her like suffer through that was very hard for me and God was there with me through that and he was giving me the strength to move forward with having to deal with that and also giving my grandma the strength that she needed to move forward and um this situation might not have been the best of situations but God gave me the strength to take it on and once she passed away he definitely gave me a lot of strength in that situation when I was very sad and at a low point and I just am very grateful for that so not only um, has he given me strength through low points in my life, but he has also given me strength in the high points in my life, such as when I play volleyball. Um, I love volleyball, and the one thing is when I go on the court is that I want to do my best and try my hardest, and I do, but God definitely is with me on the court a lot because I may not always have the best mindset during a game, but he's there to give me the strength to go forward with playing the game, even if I do have a good mindset. Um, and he does a lot with the whole strength thing, but also he, this is only two examples of just thousands of the things that he's done to give me strength in my life. And, um, I, this verse is like very relatable and also inspiring because I will always remember that if I'm wanting to do something or try something new that he will be there to give me the strength to try it or to do it and even if I'm doing something that I've done 
a thousand times before, I will still always have the strength to do it. And I know God is there looking over me and giving me the strength I need. A gift that God has given me is the ability to play volleyball. And this gift means a lot to me because I always play volleyball and it helps me get through a lot of things in my life. And I'm very grateful that that is the gift that I was given. Hello, my name is Logan Prunty, and I'm from the Spirit Lutheran Congregation. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make the service, so I have recorded a video for my confirmation. For my Bible verse, I chose 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25. Do you not know in, that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. This Bible verse is very specific to me because I am a runner, and when running, this is a valuable lesson to keep in mind and it can also be compared to life. In a race, there are many other runners competing against you. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is that even though you may not win the race, you should still give it your all or run as to get the prize. This also applies to life because even though I've gone through some har troubling hardships, I still give it my all or as to run in such a way as to get the prize. God has been very influential in my life. No matter what I am going through, he has always been the answer. He has always been there for me when I needed it the most. Take for example, in late winter of 7th grade, I was becoming depressed. I was having feet problems and they would be... And I would be in unbearable pain for the whole day. I could not find happiness in my activities like running in the basketball season because of that. I had just gotten back from a vacation and the homework was piling on me. One of, on one of my projects, I got a D on it, and my teacher kept having to talk to me outside of class because of these grades. My anxiety was at its worst with all the homework, too. I could not sleep at night, and I was constantly worrying. I was sluggish and overweight, and kids would tease and make fun of me because of that. Truth be told, at one point I thought about ending it. But then at school, we started a suicide awareness unit, and a person came in to talk to us about it, which really s sparked hope for me. I then talked to my parents, and we managed the stress and anxiety. I talked to my teacher. I started working out and running more often. I slowly got control over my life, and I believed that God was a big part of that, and he was the one who ignited the spark of hope to do it. Another way that God has been with me was with the death of my dog. July 10th of this year, my dog, Dora, whom I've had since I was two, was put down. I was absolutely devastated. She was one of the reasons I wanted to get home after a tough day of school. I can still remember her wet tongue greeting me once I opened the door. I felt a longing for her. Many days I would spend nights crying and praying for her. I wanted, I wanted to... I did not want to let her go. <clears throat> One of the things we did was put some of her ashes into a pendant that I wear everywhere with me. So when I'm feeling alone, I can hold the pendant and feel her with me. One particular night, I went outside and I held the pendant in my hands and I started praying. I said, Dear God, I know I've been talking to you pretty frequently, but I need you. I need you to watch over Dora for me and make sure she is safe. I need you to watch over her and make sure she is happy. But most importantly, I want you to make sure she knows I love her and I miss her and I will see her and I will see her once the time comes. Amen. And when I said amen, it started pouring out of nowhere and I started crying. But this time they were not tears of sorrow. They were tears of joy because I knew that God's way of telling me that he kept those promises <clears throat> was there. And I really felt him in that rain. And I also felt Dora. Not only in my pendant, but in my heart as well. One of the gifts God has given me was running. Ever since elementary, I had always watched my aunt, uncle, and even my dad with envy as they ran the races. I participated in a couple 5Ks when I was young, and participated in 7th and 8th grade cross country. 
I love the experience of it, so I decided to do it in my free time as well. Ever since last January, I have been constantly running four days a week. One of my recent races was the Eau Claire Half Marathon. I wanted, I wanted something to train for and set my sights to, so that's what I did. I trained for the one in May, but then it got postponed and made virtual in September because of COVID. Then, on September 26th, I ran it. It was an awesome run, and I had never challenged myself like that before. After the race, I felt great, other than the fact my legs felt like, like noodles. My goal was to get a two-and-a-half-hour half marathon, and I blew through that with a two-hour, two-minute, and 15-second half marathon, which was under a nine-minute and 30-second mile pace. I love running in it. I will be doing the next half marathon in May, and hopefully a full in 20, 2022. John 10, 11, page 1772. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I like farming and being on, oh, I'm an outside. I chose this verse because I love sheep and I uh, like farming with them and helping them when they need it. Um, something hard I've gone through is when my grandfather passed away and he was no longer there to help me with my, with the sheep and everything. So I had to lamb out all the sheep by myself and my grandma. A gift that God gave me, what is loving and caring for animals. So I'm going to show you how I care for my animals. So every day I would clean the pens and then I would feed them, all these pigs. I have to clean the pens today. And then for my chickens, I go out to the chicken coop, which is over here. the big mamas.
And then I lock the door so they can't get out. And then I come in here and I pick the eggs. Usually I have an egg basket. And then, and then I go out to where my sheep are, and I make sure that they're all doing well. What about your dog? What? Well, those are my roosters. I keep them outside because they're that's where I uh, feed them until they get uh. Here. I'm still waiting on my first egg for these guys. So I got them their pond and then their food's inside. And then my sheep are back over here. And what I do with them is I just make sure they're they're good and healthy and stuff like that. So they have their water. How's it going? Hello, TP. She looks, he's in his house and he comes out. And then they got their hay and they all look pretty good and they're all happy. So, yeah, that. So that would conclude my video. I wonder if I'm being real. Do I speak my truth or do I filter how I feel? I wouldn't it be nice to live inside a world that isn't black and white? I wonder what it's like to be my friends. I hope that they don't think I forgot about them. I wonder. I wonder. Right before I close my eyes, the only thing that's on my mind been dreaming that you feel it too. I wonder what it is like to be loved by you. Yeah. I wonder what it's like. I wonder what it is like to be loved. I wonder why I'm so afraid. Saying something wrong, I never said I was a saint. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if one day you'll be by my side to tell me that the world will end up alright. I wonder, I wonder. Right before I close my eyes, the only thing that's on my mind been dreaming that you feel it too. I wonder what it is like to be loved by you. Yeah, I wonder what it's like. I wonder what it's like to be loved by you. Yeah, I wonder what it's like. I wonder what it is like to be loved by right people. I close my eyes, the only thing that's on my mind. Been dreaming that you feel it too. I wonder, I wonder what it's like.
by you. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these young people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth ninth graders, as well as everyone else. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Amen. I ask now that our ninth graders would go to their knees, wherever they might be, and if the parents grandparents, siblings, sponsors could get behind them and place their hands on their head or on their shoulders. And those that are virtual, raise your hands in blessing upon them. Karen Vivian Alquist. Joseph William Garrison. Heaven, Angel, Hughes. Peyton, Thomas, Leith. Kadia, Rexted, Modal. Logan, James, Prunty. Blake, Cody, Sakura. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up 
in these young people the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm their faith, guide their life, empower them in their serving, give them patience in suffering, and bring them to everlasting life. Amen. We rejoice with you in your life of baptism. Together, we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Take that candle, that candle from your baptism, and let your light continue to shine so that all can see those works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.